What's up, everybody? Hey, we talk to so many people who struggle with stress and anxiety and who live a life full of distractions. And we know it doesn't have to be that way. And we're gonna be talking about it today. Listen, I know my life is busy. I know my life is full. So if I could have less anxiety and more peace, sign me up for that. Let's do it. We're gonna talk about that in the message. Plus, we got a song from our band and a story from Kareem, part of our epic family. All that and more coming up today. Great episode ahead. Let's go. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Epic Everywhere, a church experience designed to help you grow in your faith no matter where you're at on your spiritual journey. My name's Justin, this is Preston, and we are gonna be your hosts for today. Hey, what's up, everybody? So glad that you're hanging out with us today. Today is episode four, our season finale of our Kicks and Conversation series. Hey, we've had a great time. We hope you have as well. We're gonna get things started today, something we do each and every episode, which is to text in to check in. it's check-in time. All right, grab your phone, or if you're watching on your phone, go ahead, pull up your messages app and text the word here to the number on the screen. Yeah, hey, be sure to do that. Uh, When you text the word here, it is part of our interactive church experience for you. When you do that, not only do you stay in the loop, uh, but we'll text you back uh, asking how we can be praying for you this week, and we would love to do that. So be sure to text in and take your church experience to the next level. Maybe you've never texted in before. You could do that today, or if you've texted in every week during this series, so far, you're three out of four. Let's go four for four today. Like the jump shots I hit in Preston's face. Oh my gosh. Four for four. Right. Well, hey, if you are new, regardless of what he's saying, if you are new, man, we're so glad you're here. We'd love to send you a gift if you text in. It's a t-shirt and that we'd love to hook you up with. Listen, no strings attached. Except for the threads that are holding the t-shirt together. Those strings are attached, right? Well, if you're new, thanks for hanging out. Just go ahead and get text in. Well, hey, uh, hopefully you've had a chance to text in by now. Um, and we got a big Sunday next week. Uh, we do. Next Sunday, October 10th, it's Epic Live. Epic Live, baby. Epic Live is going down. Preston, Preston, why don't you tell the folks about Epic Live? Hey, Epic Live is our large monthly gathering that takes place at our venues all across the city. Uh, we'd love to see you there. There's going to be live music, there's a message, there's hot coffee, mm. uh, full kids programming, so you can drop your kids off into an environment they're going to have a great time with and then you can go and enjoy yourself. We would love to see you there. It's happening at our King of Prussia location, Northern Liberties and Parkside. So we'd love for you to join us for Epic Live and at Epic Live, we are starting our next series, Preston. Why don't you tell the folks about the next series? Tell the folks about the next series. We're kicking off a new series called Evidence, A Reason to Believe. Man, we're looking at John's account of his time with Jesus. So excited to learn from him and to take a look at all the things that he, I mean, he wrote with the idea that we would know what we believe. So excited to dive in and learn what we can. Cool. So along with the new series, also we'll be celebrating our birthday at Epic Live. Epic Church is turning 13 (laughs) years old. And so we're turning teenager, baby. You know, we're gonna have some fun with that. How are we celebrating our birthday? We are, we're gonna be celebrating by having baptism Baptisms Baptisms are for people who have already made the decision to follow Jesus. And so we're so excited to celebrate everybody that's taking that step. And uh, we're gonna be doing that, Epic Live. Man, man. so it's gonna be a great day. We've got Epic Live, we've got our birthday, we've got a new series, we've got baptisms. It's gonna be good, we would love to see you there. You can find the locations and times at epic.church. Go on the website, find that out, meet us there. That's right, we'd love to see you. But hey, even if you're not local, even if you're not like in Philly or Jersey or anything like that, hey, we still got you. Epic Everywhere is still gonna be coming to you. Maybe you're watching from somewhere else. Hey, we see you, Dan and Trish, down in Puerto Rico, checking us out. Puerto Hey, we miss you guys. So glad that you still follow along with us. Uh, We're gonna have a great time right here, Epic Everywhere, 8 a.m., premiering on YouTube or on demand. Uh, We'd love to have you there. It's gonna be here for you. A lot of good stuff coming up next week. And as we prepare for baptisms, uh, we wanted to introduce you to Kareem. Uh, Kareem got baptized last year in the height of the pandemic and nothing was gonna stop him from making his commitment to follow Jesus public. And we wanted to share some of his story with you. So meet Kareem. I believe in faith. And what I truly believe is having, believing in the higher power gets you through them days where you see everything against you. And that unseen, you can really feel that unseen that push you through, to get you through, to help you get past all the stuff that's being done to you, all the mistakes that you make. That unseen, that faith is very important. It's been tough and rough and I made a lot of bad decisions. I've hurt a lot of people, 
have had trouble forgiving people and some things like decisions I had made even though I know they were right decisions still the guilt is, is still a lot so on my journey and when guess when COVID hit and I found myself alone and through the decisions that I made I put myself in a long spot and then and there when I was I felt just down and out I really found him again so it only makes sense when I asked him to help me through this tunnel that baptism was part of the process that to get to where I need to be where he wants me to be I need to get some of this weight off me I guess what I believed it to be is a step forward of getting closer to God and it's a statement saying I'm ready to walk in a certain path and by doing this I'm making a promise to be better do better and to accept his glory and the only way to do that is by making a statement showing that I'm ready help me get there knowing that I feel blessed I feel different I realize that I'm not the same man that I used to be even from less than a year ago I'm a totally I feel different even how I respond to adversity is totally different now so I know and I feel his movement I feel his presence so I had pretty much already started walking forward be more conscious of what I do and what I say because everything that I do or say well that's anybody affects everything around you and to be to talk more to express more to listen more to be there for others. Like I was raised to always help people, but I think somewhere along the, along the way, I kind of lost, lost it. So to get back to helping me and to be more of a vessel to help other people move forward to whatever their destiny takes them. So it's just to walk more in God's light so that I can be better. I'm looking forward to baptisms next Sunday. They are some of my favorite days of the year uh, because we get to celebrate that God is still at work changing people's lives and, uh, and it's pretty cool to see. Hey, hey we want to invite you to be baptized. If you've made that decision to follow Jesus, I mean, that is your next step. Yep. Uh, and so we would love for you to join us on October 10th to make that happen. Yeah, you can get signed up at epic.church slash baptism. And hey, for every person that's made the decision to follow Jesus, this is your next step. Come on, go ahead, get signed up. We would love to celebrate with you. That's what our, our church is all about. And our vision is to see every person in the city know Jesus. Yeah, hey, and on behalf of Kareem and every person who's had their life impacted by our church, we just wanna say thank you to the so many people uh, who are generous with all that God's given them. And thank you for your sacrifice uh, in partnering with us financially to see lives change. That's really what it is all about. Yeah, if you'd like to give today, uh, it's simple to do. We invite you to give uh, by texting the word give to the number on the screen, 215-999-8575. And let's remain faithful in our giving and see what God does using it to change people's lives all across our region. Yeah, absolutely. So hey, big day next week, Epic yep. Live. We're so excited to celebrate. Don't miss out on it. It's going to be great. And we still got today series finale we to do. finish up. And so let's recap. This has been a really good series. Has Kicks it. and conversations. Every shoe has a story. We learned about some special shoes during the series. Let's see. We started with the auto lacing shoe. Remember yeah, that? I didn't, I didn't even know that was real. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the next week I learned never to trust someone that's wearing all black uh, Nike Air Force Ones. Hey, if you right? don't know that, and you got to go back and check it out. Be suspicious. <laughs> Uh, then, then we had some red bottom heels. Some yeah. Red bottoms. That, that was last week. Yeah. And today we've got a pair of mules and a pair of running shoes. Yeah, actually today there's two people that were highlighting the stories. That's why I have two sets of shoes here. We've yeah. got Mary and Martha, and we're gonna take a walk in their shoes and learn everything we can from them. So let's get to it. Hey, my name is Jake. I'm the pastor at Epic Roxburgh, and today we're wrapping up our Kicks and Conversations message series where we're talking about some conversations that Jesus had when he was on earth and, and figuring out what we can learn from them. And so as different as the world seemed 2,000 years ago, they didn't have cars, they didn't have the internet, they didn't even have electricity. 
I'm constantly amazed at how relevant what Jesus said way back then still is to us today. And so I hope you've enjoyed following along in this series with us. And if you've missed any of the episodes, no worries. Just go to our YouTube channel and you can see all the episodes listed on there. Well, one of the fun things we've been doing as part of this series is thinking about what types of shoes the characters in these stories would have been wearing if they were alive in modern times. Uh, today, we're gonna look at an interaction Jesus had with two different ladies which, who would have chosen two very different types of shoes. The first lady, she would have chosen your classic running shoes for the person who's on the go. And you know, I don't actually go out running anymore due to my arthritic hips that don't want me to do that. I do a like non-impact exercise, but I still love me some running shoes. Uh, they're, they're comfortable, they're nimble, they're light. I feel like I can get a lot of things done if I'm wearing my running shoes, even if I'm not quite as agile as I used to be. Now, the other lady from our story, she would have chosen a very different type of shoes. Uh, she would have chosen something like this. These are casual, chillin' types of shoes. Um, they, they don't have a back on them. They're actually called mules, which I didn't know until recently. I just thought they were shoes that they ran out of material for, but that's actually on purpose. So they're, they're very stylish. They are easy to slip on. You know, they're, they're really kind of like a great shoe just to kick back and enjoy yourself. Uh, but for me, like I would not be into these because I'm, I'm a go-getter. Like I want to get it done. I want to be efficient. And I feel like these mules would just kind of like hold me back a little bit. So that's a preview of the two characters from our story today. And uh, I don't know which shoe you'd pick, but let's go ahead and listen to the conversation between Jesus and these ladies and see what we can learn from it. Now I have to say that I think this interaction between Jesus and these ladies that's recorded here, it might be the most relatable Bible story you've ever heard. Um, I think it's even more relevant today than it was way back then when Jesus said it for the first time. So let's, let's read through the passage and then we'll talk about why I think that's the case. All right, this story is from Luke chapter 10. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened up her home to him. So for context, at this point, Jesus has been doing a ministry for about two years. So he's doing miracles, he's teaching. So word about him has spread. And Martha hears he's coming to town, so she invites him and his disciples over to her house for dinner. Now, let me just say that you have to be pretty confident to invite somebody over for dinner who is already famous. Like, that's a lot of pressure. If it was me, I would have said, hey, Jesus, I would love to take you out for some seafood. I hear you do some pretty cool stuff with fish at dinner time. But, you know, I'd be too nervous to actually cook for Jesus, but not Martha. If she was alive today, her last name would be Stuart. Anyway, let's keep reading. She, Martha, had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. So when Jesus arrives at Martha's home, he, he takes a seat and then Martha's sister Mary comes, slips on her mules, gets comfortable, and she's just taking in everything that Jesus has to teach her. Now Martha, different, different circumstance for her. She is giving her running shoes a workout. She is really excited about making sure everything is perfect. So she's not so sure about what Mary's doing. Check this out. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha cannot believe that Mary is just sitting there while she's running around like a crazy lady. And she's so bothered by it that she takes it out on Jesus. She says, here I am trying to get dinner for you and you are just chatting up with my sister. I need some help here, okay? Now looking back after the fact, Martha's response definitely feels a little bit over the top, but I bet that most of us can relate to an important project for school or for work where we felt like our teammates were not carrying their own weight. Or maybe everybody had dinner, but somehow you're the one sitting there doing all the dishes. Or maybe you always get stuck cleaning the bathroom, but you're not the family member who gets toothpaste all over the place. Just saying. Nobody likes a slacker. Nobody wants to look bad. And so it's easy to see why Martha gets a little bit fired up here. So she calls Jesus out. She appeals to his senses. And in true Jesus form, Jesus takes her protest and turns it into 
with a lesson that's probably even more relevant today than it was the first time that he taught it. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Jesus says, uh, Mary isn't the one that's got things backwards. You are. He says, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. Now, we don't know what all those things are, but we have a pretty good idea. Martha was probably upset that dinner was gonna be a flop and that she'll be embarrassed. She's probably concerned that Mary is taking advantage of her. She may have even been wondering if like, maybe Mary's there making this great connection with Jesus that she's missing out on, but she's really the one who's sacrificing. So whatever the reasons are that Mar Martha's in a tizzy, Jesus tells her that Mary has made the better choice. Mary chose the one thing that really matters, and that's being there with him. Now, this wasn't the response that Martha was expecting. I mean, wasn't the important thing to have everything exactly perfect for Jesus? So at the end of the night, he's like, oh, Martha, that was amazing. Thank you so much. I mean, wasn't that the goal? Surely, Martha would have some time later in the evening to listen to Jesus. Not like she's ghosting him or something, but right now, there's things that need to get done. So to Martha, and, and honestly, probably to most of us, it doesn't seem like too much to ask for Mary to get up off her duff and actually do something. But let's play this out. Let's say that Martha ends up crushing it, and Jesus is so impressed by her meal. And so she accomplished her goal, and so Martha is riding high for the rest of the day, or maybe even the rest of the week. But the way that Martha's wired, that next fire that needs to get taken care of is gonna come up pretty soon. And then she's gonna be worried and upset and distracted again. And whatever she gained from all of her busyness before is just gonna fade away and she'll be back on the crazy train. Now compare that to the option of her choosing instead to sit at Jesus' feet, experiencing his love and his acceptance, even if dinner just ends up being a Totino's frozen pizza. Think of the peace she would have from connecting with the Savior of the world and, and savoring every moment with him. What could compare with that? Remember, Martha had said to Jesus, it called him Lord whenever she made her appeal to him. And so she, I don't know totally what her understanding was, but she knew that Jesus and God were connected. So in light of that reality, in light of the opportunity that was in front of her, why would she be so distracted by something as as insignificant as a meal. When we take a step back from the whirlwind of the urgent, and remember who was available for her to spend time with. It's clear that Martha would have been the one with regrets if she kept being busy, not, not Mary for sitting aside with Jesus. And Jesus was gracious enough to Martha to point that out to her. All right, so how does this apply to you and to me? Well, the way we learn from the Bible is to first understand the original context, what it meant in the then and there, and then to determine what it means for us today in the here and now. And sometimes that can be challenging to do, but other times it's, it's just pretty straightforward. Well, for this situation, one of the obvious adjustments we need to make is that Jesus isn't on earth anymore walking around, right? None of us are having him over for dinner. However, we can spend time with Jesus by, by reading his word and by meditating on it, by, by praying and, and looking for how God speaks to us through his spirit to our spirit. But beyond that contextualization, Jesus' lesson is pretty easy for us to apply today because his comments to Martha perfectly describe the world that we're living in. Martha didn't prioritize spending time with Jesus because she was distracted, because she was worried and upset. Another version of this passage says that she was anxious. Are there any better words to describe the way that you and I feel every day besides distracted, worried, upset, and anxious? I mean, those are the things that Martha was dealing with in those days, and she didn't have TV, the internet, or a smartphone. I mean, at least Martha didn't have to worry about comparing her dinner party to what she saw on Pinterest, right? So we are flooded with more causes of distraction today than any other time in the history of the world. Now, at this point, I just wanna give a little disclaimer that I'm about to talk about some things that are gonna feel like meddling. 
but I'm okay with that, and here's why. Uh, my goal for this message is to do something that's very spiritual, to challenge and equip you to make spending time with Jesus a first priority in your life. That's a very spiritual goal. But a big part of how we get there is ridiculously practical. You can read all the books and listen to all the podcasts you want about how to connect with God. You can make all the, the lofty goals and resolutions to make sure this is a priority. But there's one thing that our relationship with God needs, which every relationship needs, and that's time and attention. And time and attention are two things that we really struggle to give to our relationship with God. According to a 2020 ABC report, the average American spends 11 hours and 54 minutes every day connected to some form of media, TV, smartphones, radios, video games. Now, although that number is a bit bloated because some of that usage is simultaneous, like watching TV while I'm checking my social media, anybody ever done that, right? Um, it is still mind boggling how much time that is. We are constantly barraged by messaging, some of which is helpful, but much of which is not. And apart from all the things that cause us to be fearful and anxious and discontent, that cause jealousy and unrealistic expectations and pressures, beyond all those things, even the things that are reasonably healthy, they cause distracting clutter in our minds. Our minds are constantly on the go in all sorts of different directions. And many of us come to like it that way. We're just addicted to stimulation. But the problem is that this barrage of information and stimulation can have a crippling effect on our spiritual lives. My guess is that if Jesus sat down with you and with me, he'd have the same thing to say to us that he had to Martha. You're worried, you're distracted, you're upset, and you're anxious because of all the things that consume your minds. You know, it's not that battling these things is abnormal. Like, that's just part of life. The problem is that the way that we live today, it unnecessarily exacerbates the problem. People have always dealt with distraction and worry, but our lifestyles in 2021, they are so unhealthy that many of us have lost the ability to hit pause and come to God to find peace. We are so distracted that we can't find the way to the doctor for our souls. And the way that we find peace with God, it was, it's been known for a long time. It was written about hundreds of years before Jesus even came to earth. Listen to this from Psalm 46, verse 10. Psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. People have pursued a relationship with God. Um, they've always known that if you're really serious about connecting with him, it takes being still. You need to be still in your mind, still in your heart, and still in your spirit. Stop doing, stop thinking and worrying about all these other things and be still so that you can meet with God. There's an old saying that says, if the devil can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. Which sounds like kind of an odd thing to say, but here's what that means. If you've humbled yourself before God and you've admitted to him that I, I need your help, I need your forgiveness, and you've put your trust in Jesus to receive that forgiveness, then you're a new person. God's spirit comes to live inside of you. He shapes our hearts, he shapes our minds, and he gives us all the power we need to live a godly life. It's an incredible gift. And when that happens, the power of Satan, who's our spiritual enemy, is overcome by the power of Jesus inside of us. That doesn't mean that we're not tempted anymore. It just means that we have a power inside of us that's greater than his power in our lives. And so, if the devil has lost his control over the way that we live, his next best move is to make us busy. It's to keep you distracted. It's to keep you from being filled and refreshed and transformed by spending time with God. Jesus told his followers this. He said, I'm like a vine and you're like a branch. If you stay connected to me, if you stay close to me, you'll produce a bunch of good fruit. God wants to do more in your life than you could ever imagine. But he also gave a warning. He said, if you don't stay close to me, if you don't stay connected to me, spiritually, you're gonna shrivel up. 
There's a one-to-one -one correlation there. The, the more that we spend time being close to God and letting him work inside of us, the more good fruit we're gonna produce. But if we don't spend time with him, we don't let him work in our lives by being still with him, we're just not gonna bear good fruit. It's that simple. And that's why this spiritual call to prioritize spending time with God, it is so intensely practical because we only have so many hours in the day and our, our minds and our hearts and our souls only have so much bandwidth. That's why I know that I need to establish boundaries in my life. Back in the, the peak of COVID, I made a rule. I would only check my phone for updates on COVID once per day because I knew if I didn't do that, I would be obsessed with it. It's the reason why when I get up in the morning, I don't check my messages or my email before I've spent time praying to God. That's why sometimes I take a, a break from following what's going on in sports. It's why I don't have the notifications on for my social media. The reason why is because I know that if I can't preserve my ability to regularly be still before God and truly know him, truly connect with him, nothing else matters. Like Jesus said, only one thing is needed, but we can never experience that if we aren't deliberately pursuing it, not in today's world. Now, I don't know what the things are that make you unnecessarily distracted and worried and upset, but I do know that there are struggles simply because you're human. So here's what I'm, I'm challenging you to do. If you're serious about creating the, the mental and emotional and schedule space you need to make time with God a priority, then take inventory of the things that you're prioritizing, your habits that you have, and look for what you can cut out, what you can adjust so that you have the space that you need. So like I said, this can be something different for all of us, uh, but let me give you some areas to consider that are kind of generally an issue. First one is work. I know that's a big one for me and for a lot of us. Like, do you find yourself always thinking and worrying about work? Do you know how to shut it off? Or is it watching TV or movies or sports? If you compare the amount of time that you spend doing entertainment versus the amount of time you spend kind of focused on God and talking with Him and, and spending time with Him, like what would that say about what you prioritize as the most important thing? Now I know that that feels like a low blow, like, hey, whoa, hold on there. But I'm not even saying that if you spend more time on a screen than you do praying or focused on God, that, that it makes you in a bad place spiritually. I'm not saying that at all. And, and the point isn't that those things are bad or that we shouldn't have fun. I'm just asking you to, to take inventory and think about the things that you do, what you invest in, how you prioritize, because I think that can be something that's affecting your ability to spend time with God. And what I really want is for you to experience the thing that really matters the most, and that's time with Him. So last question to consider, how much do you, time do you spend on social media? I ask that because if you spend an hour a day scrolling through Instagram, but the idea of spending 15 minutes a day with God feels like, that's, I just don't have time for that, well then there's probably a simple solution there. So those are some of the common areas that I think can crowd God out of our minds and our schedules. But if you'll take an honest inventory of your habits, I think it'll become clear what the things are that make spending time with God a struggle. Now, if you're watching this with somebody else, this is a great time to hit pause and to sit and talk about what are the things in your life that keep you distracted and worried and anxious. So distractions and worry and anxiety, those are some of the biggest hurdles we have to developing a closer relationship with God. But there's another big obstacle for many of us. We just don't know how to connect with God. If you've been around Christians and the church for a while, you've probably heard how important it is to pray and read your Bible. And, and people talk about it like, oh, you should just go do that. But the thing is, we talk about those habits a lot more than we actually do them. For, mo for most people, it's a lot easier just to say you should do it than to actually carry it out. So for many of us, it's not that we don't wanna have those habits, we just don't know how to. So we try to pray, but there's only so many times you can ask God for a good day and for safety for your friends and family. But what else is there to talk about? The Bible is a big book and it can seem confusing. To be honest, sometimes 
it doesn't make a lot of sense. And we're not even sure how it applies to us today. And so I think for many of us, when we hear people talk about how important it is to, to read the Bible and to pray, we kind of feel like, well, that might be great for you, but it just sounds like talking about how much fun it is to build a space shuttle. I don't even know how to do that. So if that's you, I wanna make sure that you know about the discipleship group. This is something that we started about a year ago. And in the discipleship group, we teach you how to pray, how to read and apply the Bible to your life and other spiritual habits that help you to connect with God. And in the group, we establish daily rhythms to help you make your relationship with God a central part of your life. And everyone in the group is, is placed in a cohort of two or three people where they meet weekly to pray for each other, encourage each other, and talk about what they're learning. So it's a really helpful environment in that way. Our hope is that every person in our church will eventually go through the discipleship group so that having God at the center of your life and having connection with him doesn't feel like this far off fantasy, but it's a reality for each and every one of us because that's the most important thing. Jesus says that's the thing that matters more than anything else. So you may know that our fall group started a couple weeks ago, but if you are interested in joining the discipleship group, it's group number 1601. If you sign up in the next couple of days, what we'll do is I'll have a, a meeting with you uh, next week and we'll kind of get you up to speed on it and you can hop right into the group and be a part of it this semester. Now for everybody else, if you are interested in kind of getting your relationship with God, kind of jumpstart a little bit, what you can do is you can download the Bible app. You can see the link on the screen here and it'll be in the episode notes. And on the Bible app, there are hundreds and hundreds of different Bible reading plans on a ton of different topics, including how to pray. And so that's a really simple and easy way to kind of get into a rhythm of stopping all the distractions and spending time with God. Now, I'm sure that there are some people who are watching today who are thinking to themselves, man, you're out of your mind. You're talking about spending time with someone who died 2,000 years ago. Now, if that's you, first of all, thanks so much for being with us today. And thanks for watching to the end of the service. Make sure that you text in a check-in so we can send you a free t-shirt. And listen, even if you wouldn't ever be caught dead wearing a church t-shirt in public, these shirts are really comfortable. They're actually pretty great for sleeping in. But beyond a free t-shirt, I hope we've given you something else, something to think about. What if there's a better way of life than all the distractions that we find ourselves addicted to? What if there's a God that loves you and wants you to stop and be still long enough for him to begin to reveal himself to you? You know, those of us who are followers of Jesus, we aren't so different than you. We just started by being open to the idea that there's a personal God that wants to have a relationship with us. And if that's true, it's really amazing. You don't want to miss out on it. And if it's not true, you owe it to yourself to at least figure that out for sure so you can at least cross it off of your list of possibilities. Either way, we hope that we can be the church you never knew you had, maybe even the church you never knew you really wanted. So text in to check in, let us know you're here, and the next week, tune in again, let us help you figure things out and draw your own conclusions. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much you created us for relationship with you. And thank you, God, that when, when sin separated us from you, you made a way for us to be reconciled and be brought back to you. God, I wanna pray for every person who struggles with distractions and worry and anxiety that keep them from coming to you regularly to be with you. God, I pray that you give them the clarity to know what adjustments to make and then give them the courage and the self-control to carry out what they need to do to prioritize the most important thing. And God, I also wanna pray for every person who's listening who, who maybe isn't sure that you love them, maybe isn't even sure that you exist. God, I pray that you do whatever you need to do to reveal yourself to them and to reveal your heart to them. Thank you that you love us enough that you do that. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I, I hope that today you know that there's a place of rest, a place of hope, a place of peace for each and every one of us. Now, it doesn't come easy. It doesn't come by saying yes to all the distractions that barrage us every day, but it is available to each and every one of us. Because like Jesus said, only one thing is needed. So let's sing together and commit ourselves to waiting on him.
don't believe in fairy tales I guess I've outgrown them But that doesn't mean I don't believe That there's something much bigger than me Cause I've seen it in the hospital room When the doctor said sorry There's nothing more we can do But it wasn't true I've never seen a pot of gold At the end of a rainbow But I've got a promise I can hold In the middle of a struggle God, if you said it Your performance may not be how I want you to Here's what I'll do I'm gonna wait on you I'm gonna
Well, hey, thanks for that message, Jake. I'm sure that we can all see ourselves in both of the people in today's story. Maybe we're like uh, Martha and we're, we're running around and, and we're distracted and, and we're missing what's right in front of us. Uh, but hopefully we can all see ourselves and make that decision to, to be like Mary, um, to sit at Jesus' feet, to sit in his presence uh, and to experience real peace from the anxiety that we experience, um, maybe less stress from the lives that we're living and, and really engaged with all that God has for us. Yeah, it's something that we need to do individually, like Mary, and also something we get to do together corporately. And for an opportunity for that, we have our worship night coming up on October 17th. Come on. Worship night, I know so many people have been looking forward to a time to get together, extended time of music and singing. Afterwards, we're gonna hang out outside at some fire pits around. We'd love for you to join us for worship night. We good. Hey, at the end of the day, uh, we're here to help you continue to take next steps in your spiritual journey. That's what it's all about. Yep. I'm glad to do it. Yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed this series. That's a wrap on Kicks and Conversations. Uh, hey, if you missed any episode of this series, you can always go back. It's on our YouTube forever. Forever. Right? The whole series, plus every other series we've done. So make sure you check that out. Yeah, for sure. And if you're going to join us next week, remember all the details over at epic.church for Epic Live. We'd love to have you there. Uh, and if you want to join us in celebrating baptism, maybe you've made the yes. decision to follow Jesus, go ahead, go to epic.church slash baptism, and we would love to celebrate with you. It's going to be a good time next week. And uh, make sure you comment, leave a comment, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And Preston, Preston, why don't you tell the folks, tell the folks about the next video they're about to see. Justin, and tell the folks. Man, you guys are about to hear from our lead pastor, Kent. He'd love to say, hey, and invite you to the next welcome party. And uh, that's it. Folks. That's all, folks. Oh, geez. See ya. Well, hey, thanks again for doing church with us today. If you're new, we're so glad you're here. And I want you to know we do churches like this online every week, and we'd love for you to be a part. Now, if you're local, we have large in-person gatherings once a month called Epic Live. It's a full-on celebration. So check our website for a location near you. Now listen, we'd really love to meet you. So I wanna personally invite you to something called the Welcome Party. It's an opportunity for us to connect, hear some of your story, and share some of ours. So text here to the number on the screen and we'll get you all hooked up. Listen, we really do believe that God has an incredible plan for your life. We just wanna do our part to help you discover what that is. So thanks again for hanging out with us today and we'll see you next week.